It's been six years since Apple introduced the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. I did a video last year on the device talking about its legacy with touch disease and bend gate. Today though, I want to make a video discussing its viability in 2021. As someone using it in 2021, is it worth buying? Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and today we're gonna find out. The iPhone 6 and 6 Plus are the two most sold smartphones ever, which is insane to think about. Around a quarter of a billion devices sold in its lifetime is absurdity. The 6 Plus launched for $649 or £539, though you can now have one on eBay for around £100 to £150. This will get you a decent quality model with minimal markings. I want to let this be known right at the start of the video though, do not buy an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus in 2021 if you intend on using it on a regular basis. One, it's been out of software support for a long time and will no longer get security updates or platform upgrades. This means a drop in compatibility and potentially performance too. Two, it is old, which means that performance and cameras are pretty awful in 2021. Three, the batteries used will be degraded to heck, meaning that battery life will suffer. And four, they are unreliable with touch disease being an issue for several years at this point, and this can render devices completely unusable. Right, with that out of the way, let's talk about the device in the context of curiosity. The first thing you'll notice is that the 6 and the 6 Plus look like pretty old phones. They have thick bezels, flat metal backs, and tiny camera bumps compared to what we're used to seeing these days. There's no IP rating, no in-display fingerprint scanner, no OLED panel, and no wireless charging. There's no 5G nor Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. This is pretty bare bones for a 2021 smartphone. Performance is a similar story. The Apple A8 and one gigabyte of RAM, as you might expect, make the phone pretty slow, almost to the point where it's unusable. To say the iPhone 6 Plus stutters sometimes would be an understatement. There are times where the phone crashed restarted for me, and I'm presuming that's due to the lack of memory. I mean, these things have one gigabyte of RAM. For context, iPhones these days have between four and six gigabytes of RAM, so to have one gigabyte of RAM is kind of nuts. And on the topic of storage, these have, as a base model, 16 gigabytes of storage. Just let, to let it be known, there are smartphones out there on the market today that have 16 gigabytes of RAM, let alone long-term storage. To be fair to it though, the screen isn't so bad. It's a five and a half inch 1080p IPS 60 Hertz panel, which is very well calibrated and gets fairly bright. Also, because it's in the traditional 16 by nine form factor, it's uninterrupted and most YouTube videos run without any kind of black bars or cropping. Ironically, this video not included because it's an 18 by nine form factor. I happen to find 60 Hertz mobile displays just fine. I really don't care about high refresh rate mobile displays because I'm not gaming. However, some will be turned off by its lack of smoothness. Battery life is something I brought up earlier in the video, and this is where the iPhone 6 Plus falls once again. For a phone of this size, a 2,915 mAh cell is tiny. I mean, most smartphones of this size these days are shipping with over 4,000 mAh batteries. Battery life is naturally going to be worse if you're using a lot of 4G or you've got the screen on a really high brightness, but even for sort of moderate use, I would not expect a full day from either of these on their used batteries. However, if you get them replaced with brand new cells, maybe they'll last a full day. I'm not gonna go out and spend that money to test though. What about the cameras? Well, being a traditional iPhone, you get two cameras, one on the front and one on the back, an eight megapixel main camera and a 1.2 megapixel selfie shooter. Oh, and you can record 1080p 60fps video with that main camera. Image quality is not quite as bad as you'd expect. Apple's processing was doing a lot of the heavy lifting back in 2015, which can be seen in the images that I took, given the tiny and unimpressive sensor. There's not anywhere near the amount of dynamic range and color information in these images compared to modern iPhones, and this is mostly due to inadequate hardware. There's enough detail and sharpness in my opinion, but the eight megapixel resolution means that you're really not able to crop in much before getting quite a pixelated image. The OIS definitely helps here, but that's only in the Plus model. Of course, the lack of camera versatility can result in either too wide or too cropped images. It, like a prime camera lens, requires you to really think about your framing when going for the shot. So I will reiterate, do not buy an iPhone 6 or a 6 Plus in 2021. I had to really think about the year there. 
And instead, I think if you want a smaller iPhone, you should get the iPhone SE, the brand new one. It's really good. You can pick one up used, fairly cheap, or if you really want, just go out and buy a brand new one. Their iPhone 6 form factor with modern features, way better cameras, and of course, wireless charging and that kind of gubbins. And if you want a slightly bigger device, just buy the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 12, depending on your budget. Those are two fantastic devices that will last you a number of years, as opposed to an iPhone 6 or 6S, which is barely gonna last you a year of that. With that out of the way, I want to thank Noah for providing this phone. He actually sent me this phone last year, or maybe even the year before, and I used it for a video. I wanted to get another video out of it. And uh, yeah, so I will leave his link in the video description to check out. He was kind enough to provide me with this device. Whilst you're down there, please do hit like, comment, and subscribe to never miss a video like this one. I wanna give a massive shout out to my patrons for being continually awesome. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll catch you later. Peace.